how in the world do you introduce Getty Lee? Like, you know who Getty Lee is. He's the bass player, lead singer, vocalist, frontman, legend, literal Hall of Famer from Rush. He's inspired hordes of iconic bass players, and he's among the most influential bassists of all time. Now, it's a tall order, but today we're going to figure out how to get Getty Lee's impressive tone out of our handy-dandy Zoom B1X4. So Rush is an old band. They started in 1968, and in that time since, Getty Lee has had a lot of time to evolve as a bass player. The one constant through all of these years, though, has been Getty Lee's forward and aggressive plucking style. So let's take a quick walk through Getty's setup throughout the years, and then we'll see how to make it work on our Zoom. Believe it or not, Getty Lee started out, like a lot of us, on a P bass. He's not really known for playing one, but it's there all over Rush's debut album. It was later massacred into this awful teardrop shape, but it did start life as a pretty standard 60s Fender Precision. For Rush's second album, Getty Lee had switched to a Rickenbacker 4001, which is a bass he is very strongly associated with. I'm just imagining Getty Lee in the late 60s, like watching Yes and going, Oh, that's the tone! This was his axe of choice all the way up until Permanent Waves, where he was doing 50-50 between the Rickenbacker and a Fender Jazz bass. Said Getty of the Switch, I stopped using strictly the Rickenbacker around the Permanent Waves or Moving Pictures album. Most of these records are pretty much half Ricky and half Fender Jazz. Why the change? Well, it was the shape of the bottom end tone that did it. The Ricky has a great mid and upper range, but getting a great bottom end sound was always tricky, particularly the kind that I was looking for and that's what I get rather easily on my jazz. Moving forward throughout the 80s, Getty Lee experimented with other basses, such as Wall and Steinberger, but ultimately settled on the jazz somewhere in the early mid-90s, and then stuck with that full-time until Rush retired in 2018. As for amps, Getty is known for using an Ampeg SVT with an 8x10 during the early years, just about like how everyone did in those days, and then later on he switched to a completely ampless setup. Now, there was a brief stint where Getty was endorsing Orange, but it was pretty short-lived, and basically since about 96, Getty Lee has been getting most of his tone through rock-mounted Tech 21 Sansamp stuff. Instead of having amps on stage, Getty Lee was famous for using things like coin-operated dryers and rotisseries, because it's funny. You can't get much warmer tone than plugging into a Maytag, I guess. Getty doesn't really have much in the way of effect pedals. He instead augments his playing with uh, floor-operated keyboard setups. We're not going to get into any of the synth stuff, but... The Zoom does have synth pedals. If you're interested in me trying to do that stuff, do let me know down below. But for today, we're just going to focus on the bass tone. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the gear I'm going to use today. Let's start with the bass. It's just going to be this Squire Classic Vibe Jazz. Actually recently caught some heat from a commenter who said I was out of touch because I owned nice basses like my Sarek back there. But come on, dude. These jazz basses are great and they're super versatile. And after today, you're going to see exactly why. Oh, and lest I forget, get you some round wound strings. Getty's tone is super bright, and you will struggle if your strings are like a year old or something. Anyway, let's start with the clean tone, no effects or anything. All right, so now we have a bass line. Let's start adding some effects into our zoom here, starting with probably the most important thing, which is a compressor. This is going to help tame our overplucking and get everything sounding nice and even. Next, we're going to add in the SVT and the 810 cabinet. So by itself, I felt like the SVT wasn't quite aggressive enough. So I'm going to throw in a BDDI in there, which sounds like it might be redundant because it basically just emulates an SVT. But what this does for us is it gives us some extra tone shaping options, as well as allows us to have a clean tone and an overdriven tone. Useful. So let's just start chronologically with Rush's first album, specifically Working Man. This song was recorded on Getty's P bass, so we're just going to use the neck pickup on our jazz and turn the bridge pickup all the way off, and then we're going to leave the tone all the way up. And the tone is going to stay right there for all of these clips. Probably the most important part of sounding like Getty Lee is just getting a super aggressive attack. So keep an eye on my right hand and see how much I'm winding up to really just smack the shit out of these strings. Moving 
on to Getty's Rick Tone, we're going to use a little bit of the bridge pickup, probably about a quarter or half of the way up. This allows us to keep all of the wool from the neck pickup, but gives us a bit of trouble to just kind of poke out there at the top. Now, it's not a perfect recreation of a Rick, but it's close enough given the limitations that we have here. Next, let's do the classic jazz sound that Getty is known for with just both pickups all the way up. I think this is probably the tone that Getty is most known for. It's kind of the first thing that people think of when you say Getty Lee's bass, right? So those are the classic vintage tones, but if you listen to Getty's newer stuff, both live and on the newer albums, it's a little bit different yet again, even though he's still using the jazz bass. It's a little bit more like hi-fi and saturated somehow. I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually biamping, you know, having a clean and a dirty signal and then combining those two so that you get this really big, uncompromising bass tone. We can't really emulate that on the Zoom, but I figured, hey, what does this tone sound like on some of his newer stuff? And I think it kind of works. So that's how you sound like Getty Lee. Let me know how I did in the comments down below and also tell me who you'd like to see me sound like next. If you're interested in getting the Zoom patch for this or any of the other videos I've done in this series, you can do so by becoming a patron of mine over on patreon.com. A single dollar will get you every single patch I've made in this series up until this point, but the $5 patrons get extra behind the scenes access as well as extra videos. And I'm also planning some merch stuff too. So the choice is yours. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Hit the like button on your way out, and I will see you on the next one. AMP out! <laughs>